Welcome everyone to our newest video with the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Elfira Boulay. And in today's video, we decided to continue, like, I don't know, I think we mentioned actually in the in the video when we analyzed the Chopin Waltz, we mentioned that we're going to do a follow-up. And... This is our follow-up. This is our follow-up. We decided to now analyze a few bars with you. We're not going to do the whole piece because it's going to be very long. So if you have questions, you can always come back to us. But we're going to do just a few bars of analyzing the piece, this time instead of harmonically, instead of the technical part, because we already did that last time, we're going to do a musical analyzing of the piece. In just a few minutes, a few seconds, a few minutes, you're going to hear what that means. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a follow-up. We're going to analyze a piece, analyze the piece in a totally different way. Actually, my favorite way. Mm. What's your favorite? The technical har harmonizing or the musical analyzation? Definitely also the musical. The musical yeah. analyzation. Yeah. We like this the most because it's, I don't know, it's for me, it works the most in practice, actually. While I'm playing, I never think of I'm playing the tonic, the subdominant and dominant. Mm. I think of musical terms. I imagine... I don't imagine actually anything. I always hear just the mm. the melody, the music, and even the chords. I just remember them by by sound and by meaning, what they mean in relation to each other. Mm -hmm. I never think of technical terms. No, no, me neither. No. But anyway, it's it's useful, like we said in the previous video, and this I think is also very useful. So, what does actually musical analysis means compared to a technical harmonizing? Well, I think with musical analysis, what we're going to look at are motives, um, phrases, and then bigger phrases, like real sentences, complete sentences. What do you mean by motives, so phrases a, for those who don't know? Yeah, so a motive would be a very small fragment of a melody, usually something that's repeated. And if you think about, I still don't know what a motive is, just listen to this. Now that's the most famous motive there is. You see, it's a short fragment. But it's not a complete sentence. No, exactly. We so have much more in order to have a sentence. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're gonna look at, uh, and that's why we say it in this order, you know? So motives, phrases, and then big phrases, longer sentences. And we'll explain this exactly what, what the motives are in this piece. And that's going to be part of actually this musical, um, melodic musical analysis of this, of this piece. And so what is a phrase? That's the second thing we were speaking about. A phrase is a sentence. sentence. Or part of a sentence. Or yes, and, and that's a, um, a little bit difficult maybe to, to explain, but sometimes if the sentence isn't, even if it isn't complete, it's still like a finished musical phrase, we would call it. How to explain this? So you have motives, those are the smallest chunks of a, of a musical sentence. Then you have phrases that are a little bit longer. The best thing is to demonstrate actually just in a minute with the music. A phrase for me is a few motives that are combined together and have a little bit kind of an ending, but still we miss the complete sentence, which you feel like, oh, okay, so we got something that contains a few motives in a phrase, and then we miss a little bit more from the music, something more to be said. And when that's said, then I feel that the sentence is complete. You just said something, you just expressed something musically. So it feels very complete. Like I said in the very beginning, musical analysis, to me, it's not any less important than technical analysis. And I think for you, it would be great. And for our students, it would be great to be able to understand and get involved into that. Just a little bit of musical analysis is going to help you actually a lot while you're learning the piece. So I encourage you to give it a shot. Now, before we start analyzing, actually in the previous video, we said that you could uh, analyze it harmonically until bar 16, that you had all the tools, that you had all the knowledge to do that until bar 16. So I'm very curious who of you did that. And if you did that, I'll give the answer away now, even if you didn't, um, it's actually all the same. And that's why we said you can finish it until bar 16, because it's 100% the same. The, the sentence, harmonies. yeah, the harmonies that you that we discussed, the that first means the four bars in the left hand. are repeated four times. Yep. So even, and that's why I think it's really interesting to look at, at the piece in different ways, even though in a harmonic sense, there's no variety, musically there is. Yep. And that's what I think what makes this so interesting. 
Absolutely. Let's get started with the analyzing or the analysis. One of the first things you need to do when you start analyzing a piece from a musical perspective is to look at the time signature because that's very telling, actually. If you look at the time signature, we have 3-4 and for those of you, most of you would know that 3-4 is a... I mean, the piece, the name of the piece is... Already the piece is called a waltz. It is a waltz, but 3-4 most likely and usually we count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And part of the musical analysis is how do you phrase a piece? What's what's the way that this piece would sound nice? So you don't want the piece to sound Now you see you see that sounds very flat. And in the beginning, it's okay to play that well while you're, while, while you're actually learning the piece. But later on, if you're analyzing and you, you're confident with the notes and everything, you want to start actually phrasing. And then you would phrase by emphasizing the first beat a little bit more while decreasing the sound in the second, on the second and third beats. And then it will sound like... So that's the first thing you have to look at because that's going to already help you understand musically how the piece is built and how the piece should be actually phrased. So even without analyzing, we know nothing yet about the motive or where the phrase is no. going or anything, just simply by looking at the time signature and also knowing what the time signature means. If you actually listen to Dimitar counting, he counts the first when you count oh, three, four. You don't count one, two, three. No, but, but that's, that's because I'm very special. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis is on the one and you you heard him already doing that. So the knowledge of the time signature, looking at what time signature it is and having the knowledge of what kind of cadence does that time signature have. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one step further. What are the motives actually? If you look at the piece, it is very simple. You have the first bar is the first motive. That's a little motive, right? Then we have another motive. So somebody says something, but you're even more curious, right? So those are two motives that are going to start combining. We're going to start combining them and go further because now you're curious about further with the piece. There is no resolution, right? And that's what we mean by motives. Motives just make you think of something. Then if you look at bar three and four, we have not one bar because till now we had bar one and two those are two different motives yes well they're kind of the same motive if you see because if you're still having trouble grasping what a motive is think of it as a pattern and you see that in general the pattern is kind of the same but it's just repeated on a higher note it's a tiny bit different rhythmically but the the pattern of it is is the same and then if you look at bar three and four bar three and four are actually together forming one motive because otherwise if i play only bar three we miss the last part. So what Chopin did is very beautiful, very simple, but very beautiful. We have bar one and two, a little, little kind of question mark, little, little questions, two different questions. And then you have bar three, bars three and four that combine together a little bit of an answer. And I would call that a first phrase with the three and four. But the sentence is not finished because we have this, Elvira will explain just in a second. And if I play them together, so we have three different motives, bar one, bars one and two, and then bars three and four, we have three different motives. And if I play them together, that I'd call a phrase. Yeah. Because... And the question is kind of answered now. But not really. But not complete, yeah. So that's part of the sentence, of our first sentence. And why is it actually not a complete sentence? Yeah, so, so if you're somebody that panics a little bit because you can't hear it, first of all, I want to say two things. If you do it enough, if you analyze something musically, if you do it often enough, or if you watch somebody's analyzing it like we're doing now, we can make more videos, you can watch us doing this several times, you will get automatically a better feeling for it, so don't worry. And second of all, also the harmonic analysis will be helpful here. So if we look at um, 
just really quickly back to the harmonic analysis that we did, um, this ends on a three, a step three. It's Let a C major write chord. It, write it down for yeah. them mm -hmm. again because I think it would be useful. So we're talking about this bar, right? Yeah, this bar. So we're ending not this on bar. the tonic, right? We're ending on the third chord of A minor, which is C major. On the third step. Yeah, on the third step. Yeah. So um, C major in A minor, it's it's a uh, it's we're not it feels like we're not in the same key, so it feels very unresolved. It, it, it does feel unresolved, yes. So that's why they're connected now, the musical and the harmonic. They are connected, analysis, yeah. especially if you yet don't have a lot of experience and perhaps not have the, you know, aren't feeling like you can count on your musicality just yet. You can definitely uh, involve your harmonic analysis in your musical analysis. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but just to actually to point it to them that mm -hmm. this is motive one, this mm -hmm. is motive two, and this here. Is motive three, yeah. right? Yeah, that's, so we, yeah, so we have it written so, down. So we have from here until here is our first actually phrase. Actually, our first, first phrase. Yeah. yeah, our first phrase. I mean, I didn't do it pretty like you because <laughs> I'm a terrible pa a painter. <laughs> painter. I draw terribly, so mm. I mean, but you understand what's what's happening here. Yeah, it's uh, it's visible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, uh, Con if, minder. Yeah, if you look at this bar where we're ending on the third step, right? When we're ending on the C major chord. The reason why it the phrase sounds unfinished, why it sounds like it's it's, you know, ending on a question actually. It sounds unfinished is because the right hand, the melody doesn't end on the uh, the tone of the chord. Of the C major chord. Of the C major chord. It's it, actually the it third ends on the step third. in C major. Yeah. It ends on the third. And that is why it doesn't sound complete. So that's a little, if you have a little bit of harmonic knowledge also, it can help you just play musically. Because right now we'll move to the next part. We're just going to analyze the next four bars with you. And the rest you can do yourself because it's very similar. But you're going to see that later on in in actually bar eight. Yeah, why don't we show it now immediately? Yeah, we'll, we'll show it. That, uh, very clear. This one is again a little motive. Motive number one. This one is also a little motive. And then we have again two bars. This until here is our third, our third, third longer motive. motive. But look at the score. This note here is actually the tonic is the first step in C major and that's why it's going to sound much more resolved. So the first one was but the next one ending on the third tone in C major. E. On the C major. And then bar chord. seven and eight. Ending on the first tone of the C major chord. And that's why it sounds resolved. But now aside from the harmonic so you, they're connected, the harmonic and the melodic analysis, the musical analysis of the piece. But looking from a purely musical perspective, again, you have two motives, da -da -dum, boom, -da -da -dum, and then two bars. You don't separate those two bars because they, they're a nice motive together. And then you get a whole sentence. So when you play the piece, you would like, what, what you would like to actually do is, in, especially in bars three and four, you want the fourth bar to end with a little bit of expectation, maybe not too soft. And then bars, bar eight, you all want to end it to finish bar eight, the last note, a little bit softer, a little bit gentler. And especially the note C in the last. Very elegant and very soft. That's going to make your playing sound very beautiful because it will sound natural. It will fit together. I'm going to play actually the whole sentence for you yeah, so I you can actually nice. hear. So we start. You see this note? I don't play too soft. I don't do this. Because it's not finished. So I allow myself to have a little bit more sound on the note E. Because it's it's the end of nice. the it's the end of the sentence, and that's what we mean by musical analysis. You find the motives, you find the phrases, then 
you try to figure out where could the sentence be ending if it's not yeah if it's part of a bigger phrase and most often it is do that with your teachers in the beginning if you cannot do it by yourself as well in combination with your teachers but it's going to help your playing sound very beautiful or at least much more beautiful than you were used to playing when you didn't know about those things unless you naturally feel that but that's necessary to learn i think mm -hmm. don't rely only on that it's necessary to learn and then you can really have a true understanding of harmonically what did the composer do melodically what did he do melodically musically and then when you combine those two things together your playing is going to really move a little further a little up the a level a lot further i would say yes yeah. well i think this is what we wanted to share with you in this video I'm personally really fond of <laughs> m musical, musical melodic analysis, how the composer builds his music together, how he puts it together in phrases. I'm super interested in that. I hope you enjoyed the video. For us, it was really a great pleasure <laughs> recording it. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, by the way, yet, it would be great if you subscribe to our channel. You will help us. You will give us something back in return for this video in the sense that we will be able to grow the channel and we'll be able to reach more people this way. We would enjoy that enormously. You can follow us also on our Instagram, Dimitrov Boulay, the same name as our YouTube uh, channel. Something else that we needed to... Um, no. Except coax, coaxing them into subscribing to our channel. <laughs> I, th else? I think, okay, maybe maybe I have something in, that I find really interesting. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, just a tiny bit more about the musical just phrases. Stay tuned for 50, 15 more minutes. <laughs> so what I find interesting is very often you will see a big symmetry. You see that the motive is one, one bar or two bars in this case. And then the phrase is four bars. And the oh. bigger phrase is eight bars. Oh, very and you nice. will very often see this symmetry. And very often you will see a phrase being an even number of bars instead of an odd number of bars. That's more rare. So you're saying that actually mathematically it makes yeah. also a lot of sense. Which I find interesting, of course. I really can't say exactly why that that is and probably it sounds just better in our it's ears always we're probably very made logical. that way yeah. yeah that's it i think there is nothing else that was a little how do you call those uh, at the end of a trailer you know if you watch until the very end there still comes some little movie scene like at the end of the avengers yeah how so do you call that? <laughs> that that that's called watch as long as possible on video <laughs> don't you know it uh, thank you so much for watching. For us, it was a great pleasure. As usual, see you next time.